Jumping Jack Frost, uh, Nigel Thompson here, still with me, Tom Latcham on Raw. Um, I want to move into the present, really, and talk about drum and bass, because uh, you love it so much. And it is massive. It's truly a uh, huge worldwide sound, big festivals, loads of events, loads of releases, a lot of your releases as well. Um, why do you think that this music of yours has found so much success globally? You know what? Just the energy, the energy of the music, you know what I mean? It's 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 born out of it's born out of the out of out of the struggles of of being shackled. Do you know what I mean? Remember, you know, when the when um when the rave scene first started, we had like the same kind of thing like now. We had to fight for our freedom to dance. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's that same thing. It's just a progression from hardcore to it's it's, it's built up over generations. Do you know what I mean? So you gotta remember as well. Jungle drum bass, I think it's the only music that comes from the new the UK that or the first music that is exported to the world. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think people love it so much. I think it's just the energy as well. And it's got so many different elements to it. You've got a reggae element, you got no matter what kind of musical background you come from, you can apply that to drum bass and make it work. Do you know what I mean? And it and it, and it that appeals to people. Do you know what I'm saying? And which do you prefer, uh, the current rave scene, big events, lots of money? Um, but of course, to get lots of money into a scene, it requires it to be much more commercial uh, than it once was, specifically when, when it started back in the early 90s. Or do you prefer those early days where it was probably well, slightly less well paid, but it was more about. If you look at, you look at, you look at the kind of music freedom. we put out, you look at the kind of music we put out as a label, and you look at the, the paths that myself and Brian have taken, I think it shows. That we're we're into the, more into the underground, you know what I mean? We're into like music, real proper music, not like you know, everything's got its place. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to sit here and criticize anything or anyone. Do you know what I mean? But some things are just not for me. Do you know what I'm saying? Some kind of tunes ain't for me, and um, I think that speaks for itself, really. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you can't look. You can't, you can't like everything. <laughs> That was, it was like that would be ridiculous. Like obviously everyone's everyone's different, and you will you know you will put out what you want to put out. I suppose. Um, what do you think in your mind? No, obviously you know you've you've talked about the, the the positives and the virtues of the drum and bass scene today. What do you think it could improve? Um, I don't know. I think that people just got. I think you know people have always got this thing. Is this, how can we improve it? I think it's a natural progression. It always improves. It always improves anyway. Do you know what I mean? Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep being true to yourself. you always got people that push the envelope then someone else grabs that then they take it on. So it always does it anyway. It's a natural progression. Do you know what I mean? And that's the only improvements I'd like to see. Do you know what I'm saying? Just keep doing that. Um, what I uh, I spoke to Mampy Swift uh, and we talked about Andy C because they were the sort of kings of the double drops and uh, I was asking if there was any rivalry and all that sort of stuff. But what I did want to ask him, or I did ask him rather, and I'd like to ask you, um, you know, he's the biggest name trauma based DJ on social media, but also in his pull. Um, tours constantly. He's, you know, just he sold, sold out, out Wembley in 20 second minutes. Event at Wembley. Yeah, in 20 minutes at Wembley Arena. Um, how has he managed to do that? And he's an exceptional DJ exceptional you just watch him you just go and watch him play he's exceptional he's fucking amazing do you know what i mean and that's the bottom line of it he's amazing he's an exceptional and he's a wonderful guy as well do you know what i mean he's a really nice guy really nice guy i've known him since he was young i've known him since he was like 18 19 do you know what i mean i've known him since he was 18 19 maybe even 17 i don't know maybe but i've known him since he was really young Could could you tell he had something special back when he when you first yeah, met him as a teenager? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, you know, he's quite. He had, I think he had a long dark tunnel out when he was like a kid. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's an exceptional guy. Exceptional. He's an absolutely amazing DJ. You know what I mean? So I think that's the bottom line. Do you know what I mean? Some of the stuff that he does is just amazing. Do you know what I'm saying? Really, really is. Do you know what I mean? He's passionate. He's passionate for the music as well. When you see him talking, and when you see him talking about his music. He's, you can see the passion. Do you know what I mean? He loves it. Do you know what I mean? He loves it. Yeah, of course, he's going to bring in lots of interest from a wider audience, which is why he's able to sell out uh, Wembley Arena uh, quite quickly, twice. <laughs> um, is there any drawback to someone being so big among a scene? 
because uh, while he brings in audiences, there is the sort of there is the, the there might be the feeling that perhaps he sort of everything else sort of falls by the wayside when it's Andy C's around. Because well, you've got to remember that might bring people in that have never been hurt, exposed to John Bass before. Then they go on to find other things. You understand what I'm saying? They might fight. They might start off with Andy, and then after they'll say, "All right, let's see what else is there." Then they might find other stuff. Do you know what I mean? And that's that is that's what you call an ambassador for this music. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's the bottom mm. line of it. Mm. Um, I found it surprising. I, I talked to Mampy Swift about this, about the idea of a drum and bass or a rave community. Now, does it whether it still exists? Uh, he, he felt it definitely, definitely existed in the first place back when he first got into it, but less so these days. And I, I found it surprising about how little a lot of people in this scene are prepared to help and give others. And I don't include you in that, I, I'd like to stress, because um, clearly you see net value in networks and collaboration as we've as we've touched upon earlier on. But to you, does the drum and bass community exist in the same way as it used to with the early rave scene? Um, I'll tell you something. If something happens to someone, right, within our community, you see how fast everyone comes together. Do you know what I mean? They'll be together like a shop. Something happens to something to someone in a job based community and they need our help or the help of their peers and colleagues. You see how fast everyone comes together. So, yeah, I think that community thing is still there. You know what I mean? Obviously, we don't, you know, because of technology and all that, we don't see each other as much as we used to because you can talk how me and you're talking now. Do you know what I mean? But if something happens to one of us, right, like someone got ill, look look at Fats when Fats was ill, everyone came together, we all raised money, we all done our bit, do you know what I mean? And, you know, and this is what we do, this is what we do, do you know what I'm saying? This is what we do. We're, we're a community, you know what I mean? Ha, ha has that community helped drum and bass to the size that it is? Because I, I, I think a, a, a complaint that quite a lot of people would have about the hardcore scene was it it became quite stale because there were the same people on the same lineups and playing the same sort of stuff. And eventually that gets boring. And, and, and as we know with drum and bass, there's huge variation in it now. You know, there's all these different genres. Has that community, it, 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 uh, does part of that community involve helping young talent into the scene as well? Um. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Do you know what I mean? There's always we got like we're always we've always got young artists coming through and new people. If you're good enough, may I state, as a producer, you know what I mean? You have to be good enough first. Just because you're young, it doesn't mean you know what I mean you have to be good enough. Do you know what I mean? But I think it's an important part when someone's good enough, and there always is someone new. Always, do you know what I mean? When someone's good enough, then they get a lot of love from the community. If there's any up and coming uh, producers who'd like to, uh, who think that they'd be perfect for you on V, what should they do? What's the best advice you could give them to getting your record on V? Just, just, just make, just make good music, and but make don't make it because don't make it for us. Make it for yourself first. Make it for yourself first, and then you take it from you take it from there. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? You got to be true to yourself first. Be you. Do you know what I mean? And just you know, I'm, 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 I'm take it from there. Okay, um, I'm interested uh, to get your take on the drama based arena documentary because I got Brian's on it, and he was really passionate about it. Actually, he was really impassioned about it. He said, "You know what? We were really, really cross about it, but we sorted it out." And I thought that was a really smart, you know, a really nice way of of approaching it. Some people um, uh, view it in a different way, but I, I, I remember at the time, I remember it happening that your anger on on social media. Um, you, I was in V, you and Brian were left out, Ray Keith was left out, all, all rightly quite annoyed. How did you feel about it now? And you know, I, know I saw on social media, but for, 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 that, for our listeners, how well, do you feel? Well, um, for the record, you know, we, you know, I, I had my say and I was very vocal about it. I thought that if you're gonna, if you're gonna um, call something the history of drum and bass, you can't conveniently leave out what doesn't suit your narrative or the, what doesn't suit you. And which is what they've done. They left out a whole bunch of people and tried to rewrite their history how they were in it. So, I mean, and um, um, 
I thought that was the wrong way to go about it. It was inaccurate and it was quite slightly disrespectful because it wasn't correct. Do you know what I'm saying? So I had my say and, you know, we we, we spoke or had a long conversation on the phone and, um, and, you know, we sorted things out and they, they saw the error of their ways. Do you know what I mean? I think that you know, the, In- there, were, there was a bunch of factors as to why it came out the way it did because they were, you know, they did try to get people in there apparently that let down at the last minute and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I, I will I will commend them for taking responsibility where they went wrong as well. And it was, you know, it's one of these things that, that thing, shit happens, you know. The, uh, there's been a lot of talk and I've asked, I, I asked uh, 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 Mappy Swift, I've asked a few people, and particularly people of colour who, who, who I've interviewed, who helped create this scene that is, uh, that was based upon multiculturalism. Now, the, the your general crowd at Drum and Bass is largely white, and that is also increasingly reflected behind the decks. Um, and there has been the, the, the word whitewashing is, is used. Uh, why has Drum and Bass gone from such a multicultural scene to now being largely, particularly in the know. crowd, yeah. I don't white? Know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think that a lot of maybe a lot of the black kids are into different music now. Do you know what I mean? Grime and other 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 kind of things. And why do you think that is? And how do you feel about that? Um, I don't know. I think that a lot of the music that a lot of the music that's made at those kind of drum and bass parties with you know what I mean are kind of it's like watered down. Some of the tunes hasn't really got no bass and all that as well. So. The whole black vibe app is kind of gone out of it, basically. Do you know what I mean? So, I but not at V. Not at V. No, not at V. Never. I mean, obviously. I mean, I mean, obviously. You're, you know, you and Brian are both black. I don't mean literally, but I mean the sound. You know, you, 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 you retain that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent, always, always. But is not enough people perhaps doing the same? Everyone, ev- you know, it's everyone's responsible for their own ship. You know what I mean? And what makes this music and what makes this scene beautiful is that it's diverse and everyone does, you know what I mean? What's good for one person isn't good for someone else. And what's good for you might not be good for me, but might be good for someone else. And that's what's beautiful about it. Given that we know uh, that all this stuff is trend, you know, it's just trends, a lot of this stuff, and the sound is a trend and the, the, the crowd is often a trend. Do you ever see bass coming back and those elements that, you know, appeal oh. to black culture and therefore the crowd changing uh, and becoming more multicultural again? Or yeah. is it sort of perhaps lost to uh, oh, lost, lost to it? I think, I think it, everything goes in cycles, always, as we know. Everything goes in cycles. And, um, you, know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy because, you know, you've got, you, you got, you got places that we play in that where the bass is... You, the bass drops, <laughs> so you know you got you got like a, a a mixture of people from all different backgrounds, as it's always been. Do you know what I'm saying? So we're we're quite fortunate in that way that you know, crowds represent us where we're at. And what we represent, our, our audience kind of reflects that. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk next, uh, wrap up this interview by talking about what you've been up to in the past year, including a bit more about the Frost Report, because I want to hear why you decided to set it up. Oi, oi, go check out the new digital six-track EP, A New Hype, from the 14-year-old DJ Seema. Yes, 14 on full the cool recordings. I mean, sounds more ravey in Essex than Warrington, though, doesn't it? We really hope you're enjoying yet another one of Raw's in-depth interviews about the rave scene, which we are proud to say are now all curated into the British Library Sound Archive. All of us here at Raw HQ love how much you love what we do, and your generous one-off donations have been a huge help in covering our initial costs. But we're now a team of five, putting in a combined 80 hours a week for no wages, with big plans to expand further, and so our costs are going up. 
As such, we could really use your help to keep Raw growing and developing, as you've seen us do since our launch in July 2020. First up, go and check out our brand new website. It's rawuk.com, where you can find loads of cool extra content, and you can grab Raw's first ever range of merchandise. That's rawuk.com for our new flashy website. We've also launched a new membership scheme where you can support us financially to create more content on an ongoing basis for less than the price of an oat milk cappuccino. Plus, you get great perks in return. Head to patreon.com forward slash raw UK pods. That's patreon.com forward slash raw UK pods to see exactly what's on offer. You can also join our YouTube membership, which is basically the same. Uh, or if you're not asked about a membership, but you'd like to support us with a few quid as a one-off or a repeat donation, then head to our website and click the PayPal link. A reminder of that new website URL yet again, rawuk.com. Big love and respect to you all. Please keep supporting us. Hope you enjoy the rest of the app. Friday the 20th of August, Tottenham Hotspur versus Leeds United. Tottenham Hotspur versus Leeds a new event, Return to Source, celebrating 90s rave, hardcore, jungle, happy hardcore, drum and bass, and techno. Touch us down at Suki 10C in Digbeth, Birmingham. We have Fusion South Coast legend DJ Druid, Quest and Fiber Optics DJ Fallout, the uprising northern legend that is DJ Paulo, and London Town's final trickster playing his first happy hardcore set in over 18 years. <laughs> Tickets are priced at only £14. Just search Facebook and Eventbrite for Return to Source Rain. So we're still here uh, with uh, Nigel Thompson, who's uh, also known, of course, as Jumping Jack Frost. I've uh, enjoyed this interview thoroughly, but it's coming towards the end. I want to ask him what he's been up to for the past year and uh, and also look back on his career. Um, so how has, Nigel, the last been the last year been for you? Um, I know you've got, you got, you got me changing. Oh, you've got to do that again. <laughs> right, OK. One Come second. On. No problem. No problem. I was, I, 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 you caught me on the up there. That's fine. No, no problem. I'll start again. So as we uh, come towards this, at uh, the end of this interview with Jumping Jack Frost, is also called uh, Nigel Thompson. Um, I want to look back at the past year. It's been been a tough year for the industry, for you yourself, uh, and for the for the rave scene. But also look back upon his whole career. But before we get to that, how has the past year been for you? I know you've kept busy, but that doesn't mean it's not been difficult. It's been, it's been, I mean, it's been busy. It's been busy because I've been working on my album. Um, but it's been tough because, like, I lost my cousin Denny. You know, and he's, you know, he's you know, the last three months of his life. Well, for the last six months, we've been trying to raise money to send him to America to get especially his treatment that could have saved his life. You know what I mean? And then just as lockdown came in, he was unable to fly. And we'd raise the money, do you know what I mean? Really? Uh, yeah, oh, we, raised, we, we raised a half a million to send oh. him over there to get this treatment. And then lockdown came in, and we, you know, and then he just got sick and he died. Do you know what I mean? Oh. So, that's that's so awful. I'm so yeah. sorry, mate. That was tough, you know what I mean? So, yeah. An unintended consequence of these lockdowns. Yeah. You know, the, 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 there will be oh, there, will, there will be so many, unfortunately. Yeah. My cousin Jackie died from COVID. And my aunt died from COVID as well. Right. Yeah. So you can add all of that in to uh, an already difficult situation where you're not able to perform and DJ and do the things that you love doing. Yeah. And you've got, you know, you, you do have mental health uh, issues. And I mean, I, I, I can't imagine what that last year must have been like. Well, to be honest with you, that mental health issues, I, I was cool. I was cool like, through the pandemic with that. You know, I mean, that was something that I was cool with that because I've, I've been doing my exercises, right, that I got from the therapist and I've been seeing my therapist all the way through because it's like, it's, it's just like seeing the doctor, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So I've been seeing my therapist all the way through. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have any depression problems or anything like that. That's you know great. I mean? through, through the pandemic, that's like, that's like back in the day. That's like right. years ago, do you know what I mean? Recently, well, that I, shows what a... What a um a fantastic achievement has been because I tell you, I went to counseling during lockdown. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't have a history particularly yeah, of depression. I, 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 so I, I, it shows what great work you must've put in over the last however many years to, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. even something like this, to not have been yeah. thrown by it. No. Okay. I, I, and plus as well, this whole thing with Denny, I was so 
because my cousin, Denny's dad, is my older cousin, and I was just trying to be there for him as well. Do you know what I mean? Because he's you know, like, I was just trying to be there for him. And all of us were just all there for each other. So I didn't really have time to feel that way. Do you know what I mean? I didn't really have time to feel that way. And and how much, in terms of the performing, how much have you missed that? Oh, I missed it immensely. I missed performing, man. Do you know what I mean? Lucky I got all the set up at home and everything. So just kind of try to stay sharp. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, I missed it, man. It's like, you, know, you can't beat that plenty of five people and stuff like that. I'm looking forward to getting back out there because, you know, the diary's filling up nicely, and which I'm really grateful for. You know what I mean? I'm really grateful for that. You know what I mean? So, Well, fingers crossed it's all going to come loose. And we should say that we've recorded this in, like, mid-May. And uh, so we, we actually sort of don't know. But fingers crossed when this comes out, it's all gone away and you're going to be playing again. And uh, But, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. see, mate. We'll see. Um, <laughs> you were on Channel 4 News during lockdown one, appealing to young people not to go to raves during a pandemic. Why yeah. did you feel so strongly about uh, illegal raves or play graves, as they've been called by some people, that, that you decided to do that? At that time, um, my cousin had just died, yeah? And some of these kids didn't understand that you could, you might, they might have gone and caught COVID, yeah? They might have been okay. But then they're going to go to their grandmother's house. They can kill their grandmother. They might, they might have been fine. But if their grandmother catches that, that's it. And, it's, and it spreads, you know what I mean? It's, it was just, you know, it was, it, was, it was dangerous at that time. I've known that because my cousin Jackie died within the first two months of lockdown. So I knew only too well the dangers and what was happening with the spread, how it spreads. Do you know what I mean? So he, all it took is one person having that virus in that in that rave. And all those people are going home to their mums and dads. Do you know what I mean? I've got a friend. I won't say his name. He wasn't taking... He was like, oh, I'm not going to wear a mask. And he was like, wasn't taking it too seriously. Huh? And he spent Christmas at his mum's house. And his, you know, his mum and dad both got ill and his dad died. And he, and he ended up in hospital. You know what I mean? So That must be awful. Yeah. I spoke to him and he, he, on FaceTime from his hospital bed, he was broken. You know what I mean? And he, uh, I, mean I, I didn't go to my mum's house. I was, so only recently I started going to my mum's house. Do you know what I mean? Because I've, I've had a vaccine. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, would the young Frost have listened to the old Frost about oh. not going to play graves? I said that on the I said that on the TV. I said, no way, I'd have been there. <laughs> I'd have been, I'd have been, you know, to be honest with you, I don't know because something like of this magnitude, a global pandemic, that's not being a rebel. That's being goddamn stupid. And, I was never stupid. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't, you know, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So, the Frost Report. Uh, it's yeah. your new project. You've. Uh, it's a podcast. It's a. If no one's seen it, it's a sort of in the round discussion uh, podcast where you talk about issues with uh, a range of interesting guests, including Kevin Campbell, the uh, former Arsenal striker, and and others. You've had drama based specials with uh, Man Pete Swift, of course, uh, and Doc Scott, etc. Where you talked uh, about mental health. That was that one. Um, why did you start it? Um, I just, I went, on, I went on someone's podcast and I thought, I could do this. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a piece of piss, mate. I thought I could do this. Do you know what I mean? And plus as well, I've got a lot to say about stuff. Do you know what I mean? I've got a lot of opinions and stuff. I think the whole thing with George Floyd really infuriated me last year. I was really angry. Do you know what I mean? And I think I wanted to get my point across there. Do you know what I mean? And hence the first episode was kind of on that, on talking about stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah I, and I've, got, I've got some good guests lined up. Like, I've got the next one I'm doing that is going to be um, on gang, serious youth violence and gangs, county lines. And then when I've got some great guests on for that, people, I've got a young lady that survived, survived county lines. I've got... Wow. You put that with gang organisations, you know what I mean. I mean but and it's it's going to be good because you know I do I do a podcast on a boat on a, on a yep. canal boat called a boat pod, um, and this is going to be the first time I'm going to have people actually coming on the boat. Ah, oh, brilliant! Do yeah. around the table because obviously due to restrictions I've had to do it on Zoom, which has been cool because I've got a good team tech, tech team 
put it together pretty pretty cleverly. So, looking so what was that? You you do a lot of you seem to do quite a lot of specials around issues. Really, um, was that always the aim when you started it? Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be. It's, it's always gonna be. I do little music specials. Do you know what I mean? I'm gonna do one called We Love Drum and Bass, and there's a, a few of us having a laugh. I might get a couple of comedians in as well, like you know, I mean, Curtis Walker and maybe you know, what I mean, maybe a few of the, a few of the other guys like Rob, Robbie, um, Robbie, um, Robbie, thing again, the actor guy. What's his name? Robbie. From who? No, the actor guy, Robbie, the comedian. What, Rob? Oh, what, Robbie Coltrane? I mean, he's a bit old. That can't be it. No, <laughs> I forgot his name. Anyway, but I've, yeah. I've, yeah, I might uh, get the comedians in. I don't know. I mean, yeah. but I think it's going to always, there's always something will always come up that will need to be spoken about. Yeah. And if, if it pulls that, if it gets me going like that, then it's going to be on. Do you know what I mean? So, what's been the reaction so far to it? Have you felt it's gone? Um, it's been, it's been, really, I've had a really good reaction from it, you know. People, it's, you know, I've, people have taken a lot out of it, especially the one with the last one with Swift and Friction and Scotty. A lot of people got a lot out of it. That mm. you know, to see that we're talking about stuff like that, do you know what I mean, was helped them because they're like, well, we thought that if you guys can talk about it, and if you guys are going, I've been through that stuff, then maybe I feel a little bit better. So that I'm not on my own. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This is what I was saying. This did, conversation. did you get much? Free, you got much feedback then from it? Well, a lot of feedback from it. Wicked. I mean, all of us did individually. Do you know what I mean? Got a lot of feedback from it because the guys, the guys were incredibly open and honest and brave, do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, you know, they deserve a lot of credit for coming on. If I, if I can say to you as well, one of my, for me, one of your uh, most endearing qualities is you're such a big supporter of women's rights. And um, you did a special on it, in fact, after the Sarah Everard uh, yeah. killing. Um, yeah. Why did you decide to do that uh, that particular topic? Um, because I thought it was important that women could be more protected, and especially during this during this pandemic. Do you know, um, assaults against women have gone up so much, and you know, people got partners stuck at home with with abusive got p- women stuck at home with abusive partners in lockdown, and it's only and they've already been in in um, violent relationships, it's already violent, but the lockdown has intensified it, do you know what I mean? So I thought it was important to talk about it, do you know what I mean? And it, it, give it, I've got the platform to do it, and I thought it was I thought it was an important thing that I thought that had to be done. And what was the reaction to it? It was re- had a really good reaction for me, really good, do you know what I mean? Because, really, you know, we've got guys out there saying, well, you know, what is it not, it, well, it ain't me, is it? Like, you know, what is it they're saying? Why should I have to, whatever, I mean, but I just thought, let's have a little bit of understanding of maybe what women go through when they feel intimidated or mm. scared, you know what I mean? Mm. Important. Given you are such a, a a big supporter of women's rights, I've I've actually not asked this question to anybody else, but, but because you are such a big supporter of women's rights, it seems like an apt opportunity to do it. We've only had one female person uh, one female artist appear on this was, was rap. I think I did. Uh, fingers crossed by by the by the point this has come out, we've also got Mistress Mo. But there's not many. They, like I've really tried, and you really you've got you know you had Chemistry and Storm, of course, um, and then Fallout, and 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 pretty much that's it. And why do you think there haven't been more female rap artists? Well, you got people. You got you got Lisa Loud. You got Nancy Noise. You got. Um, Miss Woods, you got. Um, but in the jungle and drum and bass and hardcore scenes, in, the, in, in, in those Joe, scenes. Smoking Joe, um, there's loads. But there wasn't in the 90s, really. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, not as, not as many as the guys, you know what I mean? Not as many. But, you know, there's, there are real big con- women who are contributing to, to this scene. Do you know what I mean? Like some, of the, some, of the, some of the ones I just mentioned there. That's who contribute, you know what I mean? Contributors. Is it getting better? No. <laughs> How depressing. <laughs> we, need more, we need more women to come through and we need more women like, on lineups and stuff like that as well. That is a big conversation at the moment. But I think is it? That, oh yeah, it is. I think I think I think I think there's room for more women on lineups, hundred percent. 
I mean, yeah. So if there's any women DJs out there and producers, by the way, because we run a thing called um, Track Attack, Raw Track Attack, and we, I basically just said to a load of young, uh, to a load of young, just anybody who, if you want us to roll out your music and we'll we'll do that. And people have been sending us videos to play out, and I've been yeah. really surprised by the number of female producers. Yeah, just this, you know, if, the girls are out there doing their thing right now, man. Yeah. You know, so if yeah. if you're listening to this. This is the time to try and push forward, right? Because there is opportunities coming. Is that is that what you think is happening? Yeah, you know, you have to um, you've got to keep pushing, whatever. You've got to keep pushing, man. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Don't be put off. Be determined. Be fierce, and go yes. get it. <laughs> yes. Um, you've got Chuck D on in July. Is that right? You um, one of your idols, right? Yeah, man. Chuck D from Public Enemy is going to be on the well show. done. So it's going to be quite, quite. Quite good, quite interesting. You know, I'm looking forward to that. What are your plans for him? What's because that's not a special, of course, is it? Because uh, that's just oh, Chuck D. Yeah, we're just we're just talking, man. About you know, we're going to be talking about hip hop culture, Black Lives Matter, obviously the thing with George Floyd or situation in America, where we're at right now. Do you know what I mean? With all that, do you know what I mean? So you know, who better to talk to about that than Chuck? You know what I mean? Do you think you're going to get starstruck? Probably. <laughs> I mean, I'll be all right. <laughs> you know so many celebs uh, you, get, you, you, you ain't gonna get a star uh, let's uh, sort of look back on your career uh, Malcolm Payne says on Twitter you're a total a legend and hero he said it's an obvious one but how do you continue to find inspiration after all this time and how do you cultivate that creative spark is it an active process or does it come naturally it's just natural man I'm just like what, what, what's going on now what we're gonna do what I mean what, like, what, you know what I mean it's just like yeah what we're gonna do so I need, always need something to focus on. Always. Uh, do you? How long do you think you'll play music for? That's a question from MC Majika, who's been on this podcast before. By the way, a, very, a belting interview as well. If you haven't listened to that at home, go and check that one out. How do you? Th how long do you? Uh, do you think you'll play music for? They didn't have to drag me off the decks. Yeah. Hey. Oh, we're going to do a talk Tommy Cooper and die on stage. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> do you yeah. think you'll ever retire? No. You don't yeah. know how to, do you? DJs, DJs don't retire. The phone just stops ringing. <laughs> they retire you. <laughs> Get it. Um, and, and looking back then, what is your what was your fave year of the 90s and why? Um, I don't know. I think 94, 95 was pretty special. The jungle years. Do you know what I mean? I had Leviticus out and... I think that was, you know, there's, there's been very special years, like the whole thing with the roast and that jungle reggae era. It's a very pretty special times. Will we will we ever see those times again? Maybe, maybe, man. Do you know what I mean? Everything goes around like that. And I know that you've got, like, you know, we, we, we say in your book, by the way, if go and read that book. It's on its fourth press. It's very popular. This is on its fourth press for a reason. Big, Bad and Heavy uh, by Nigel Thompson, Jumping Down Frost. Go and buy it it's really really worth the read now we know uh that you've had lots of things that perhaps in a normal life one would say were regrets but is there anything that you change no because everything everything i've been through just leads me to where i am now and i'm such a good place now such a good place creatively as a person as a family member as a dad I wouldn't change a thing, man, because everything has been everything's been a lesson. You know what I mean? Good or bad, is I've learned, I've learned from it. And what can we expect to come yeah. from uh, from Mr. Frost in the coming years when we open up again and we're back to it? Well, you know, I'll be obviously, um, hopefully, I'll be. I'll have the album out um, probably by the end of the year. You know, I want, you know what I mean, and um, and just playing parties, putting on parties with Brian. And just um, keeping the label going, and just you know enjoying life, man, and, and being grateful for for being able to get back out there. Do you know what I mean? My great, my gratitude is higher than ever, man. Like, just you know, I'd never take anything for granted again, ever. You know what I mean? Well, our gratitude is high too for your time today. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. You're a legend. Are we like you're just a great bloke. You're a lot of fun. You don't take yourself too seriously. You have a laugh, and uh, yeah, you're you're always great to watch. So uh, everyone should go and buy his book, Big Bad and Heavy. 
uh, Jumping Jack Frost, if you can get a copy. They're so uh, popular. And, uh, oh, you got one there. There you go. It looks like this. That's it, with a lovely photo of him on the front. Big, bad and heavy by Jumping Jack Frost. And also watch the Frost Report because uh, it's a great watch and lots of fun. Thank you very much, Nigel Thompson, Jumping Jack Frost. And uh, we'll see you out and about behind the decks soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And God bless you all. Love you, man. Peace. Well, that's it for another episode of Raw. And if you like what you've heard, we'd love you to get involved. All of us here at Raw HQ buzz hard off how much you, the Raw crew, enjoy our work and your generous cash donations have been a huge help since our launch. But we're now a team of five, putting in combined 80 hours a week for no wages. We've got loads of plans to go further, expand our team and offer, but that does mean that our costs are also increasing. So we could really use your help to keep Raw growing and developing as you've done since we started. So please do check out our website initially. It's rawuk.com for interesting extra content and to get your hands on our first ever range of raw merchandise. That's rawuk.com. We've also launched a new membership scheme where you can donate to create more interesting and fun content on an ongoing basis and you'll even get stuff in return. So head to patreon.com forward slash rawukpods. That's patreon.com forward slash rawukpods to see what's on offer. You can also join our YouTube membership, which is the same. Or if you're not bothered about membership, but you'd like to support us with a few quid as a one-off or repeat donation, head to our website and click the PayPal link. That website URL, one more time, rawuk.com. Respect to you for your support and for getting to the end of this episode. Please keep supporting us and help ensure there's more quality content coming your way on a regular basis. Oi, oi. Raw, raw, raw.